Hi, my name is Ginevra Wetmore. I am, have been working with UVLSRPC, which stands for the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission. Um, we're located in Lebanon, New Hampshire, and we serve basically the western, northwestern roughly area of New Hampshire, um, doing a lot of work to do with the government. Uh, we spread a lot of word about new policy, especially policies to do with the environment. So we're the ones in New Hampshire who run the toxic and hazardous waste collections. And tied to that, we also also have a um, green cleaning initiative. So trying to encourage people to make their own cleaners, to buy cleaners that aren't as toxic as other cleaners they might have been buying, having labels on those cleaners, um, some good recipes for homemade cleaners. So all those sorts of things. I have been working there this summer trying to spread the word about a lot of those sorts of things. So I've been at farmers markets, I've been teaching workshops, and um, this is basically an extension of a workshop, a couple workshops I've done, done three so far, and for people who couldn't make it to those workshops, I thought I would give one, uh, record myself giving one, uh, just so people could know what was discussed at those workshops and watch for themselves on their own time. So this is the workshop I have been giving on non-toxic household cleaners. Um, it's a lot about how to make your own cleaners, but also what to watch out for when you're buying store-bought cleaners. So while I'm talking, I'm going to be having the slides of the slideshow I use when I give the workshop up here um, on the screen with me. And um, so I can make that easier for myself. I have a computer down here. I'm going to be following along with my own slides while I talk to you. Uh, giving the presentation. So I hope you enjoy and follow along. Feel free to email me with any questions. I'll stick my email address at the end, but it is jwetmore, so j-w-e-t-m-o-r-e, -E, um, at uvlsrpc.org. So enjoy. Let's get started. So our first slide you can see here um, asks the question, why use non-toxic alternatives? Uh, we hand out one of our pamphlets that I'll also put a link to at the end of this um, that has these four reasons on it for using non-toxic cleaning alternatives. Uh, you can read them here, but money, health and safety, um, environmental reasons, and also simplicity. And I'm going to talk about those first three reasons, but I'm not going to talk about simplicity just because it's kind of self-evident. Um, as you go through as we go through this workshop, this presentation, you'll see that it really isn't that difficult. Um, I think that's the best part of it really. Oftentimes it's hard to get people to change their ways and change what they want to be doing um, in their homes. So green cleaning is really simple and you'll see I think this slideshow also really is too. Um, I have a statistic here that you can read, but I'll read it to you. Um, in 2000, cleaning products were responsible for nearly 10% of all toxic exposures reported to U.S. poison control centers. Um, I pulled the statistic just because I don't think that we often think about um, people other than ourselves in our homes, but a lot of us have pets, children, um, the kind of, you know, younger children or pets always have their mouths over everything. They're also constantly on the floor, crawling around, uh, learning to walk. So they're the ones who are often getting a lot of the dangerous chemicals that we're worried about. Um, they're getting the most exposure. So I don't really know about this statistic specifically, but I'm willing to bet that a lot of these exposures were from children um, accidentally ingesting chemicals or being exposed to them. So this slide, Clorox Greenworks Naturally Derived All-Purpose Cleaner, um, I have a picture of it there. I figure I'll mention something right now called greenwashing. It's when you make a product look a lot safer and more environmental than it actually is. So I think this product is a great example. Uh, it has flowers on the label. It's, you know, the liquid itself has been dyed green. So it looks really great and environmental. Um, Greenworks is a brand that's an offshoot of Clorox. So they have a lot of products under this Greenworks label. Um, I pulled the quote there from their website directly, uh, safe to use on multiple surfaces, 98% naturally derived, so you're not worried about it leaving behind harsh chemical fumes or residue. Let's take it from their website. Um, and I'll show you this next slide. Um, this was taken from an, a very important website. It's ewg.org. I have it in the top 
corner of this slide here. Um, EWG stands for Environmental Working Group. So Environmental Working Group, um, EWG.org, will evaluate your household cleaners for you. So as you can see, they've given it an F. Um, it kind of goes on a grading system like school would. So A, B, C, D, I don't think there's an E, and then it goes to F, um, rating how bad your cleaners are. This one has an F, and you can see some of the reasons there. Um, it has very high asthma and respiratory concerns, as well as cancer concerns. So these categories, I think there are five, these five categories that EWG is rating on, you'll find that um, the cleaner we had Greenworks before isn't really as green as you might think, and not as safe for you as you might really be thinking. Um, the two words I have at the top of this slide here, fragrance and preservative in quotation marks, are a big reason why this cleaner was not rated as highly as one might expect. Uh, fragrance is kind of a catch-all term for the thousands of chemicals that go into your scents and your fragrances and everything scented, almost everything really. Um, and it really, there are so many different fragrances that you don't know which ones are in there. And on the label all it says is fragrance. So I think the EWG is concerned about which ones are in that uh, product because a lot of them are toxic um, and can cause pretty severe allergic reactions in a lot of people. Um, also the word preservatives is a big one. Um, once again, you don't have to say which preservatives those are, just preservatives. So not so great. You don't know which one's in there. Some are worse than other. Formaldehyde is technically a preservative that can be used in cleaners. So these two words I think are a huge reason why EWG um, hasn't rated the cleaner very favorably. It's a good thing to keep in mind um, when you're shopping for cleaners and you see these green labels. Um, ask yourself, what does that really mean? So, um, this next slide kind of ties into that. It's the problem with labeling. Um, you're not required by law to list all ingredients in your label. Um, I just gave you examples, things like fragrance and preservative. That's not an ingredient, that's just a catch-all name for a type of ingredient. So that's problematic in itself. Um, also, one-third of substances in the fragrance industry are toxic, um, taken from it's at the bottom there, the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health. So the word fragrance, I think, should really cause you a lot more concern than it does a lot of people. Um, I would recommend never buying anything if it has fragrance in it. Um, it can cause allergic reactions and a bunch of other negative health effects, as you'll see here, um, allergens, those two there. Um, that second bullet point, the pH word is pronounced phthalates, um, you might hear that one a lot in reference to fragrances, um, causes abnormal, sorry, hormonal abnormalities, uh, reproductive problems, birth defects, so I don't really know exactly when we decided that we wanted our homes to smell so, you know, like tropical fragrance or something. Um, it's not really necessary. The best way to get rid of odor is to locate the source of that negative odor and eliminate it or fix it, the problem. Um, and there are other ways of having scents, good scents, that aren't fragrances, which are manufactured and not really directly from plants or herbs. Um, here's some great label know-how. You can read it along with me. Um, inert doesn't imply the chemical um, is non-toxic. So I'm not sure what inert means then exactly. Um, biodegradable isn't a regulated term. You'll see that one a lot a lot of different labels. Um, anything will biodegrade if you give it enough time. Uh, natural, not the same as organic. If you buy a lot of organic food, you hopefully know this as well. Um, natural means pretty much nothing in terms of labeling. Uh, the organic certified organic seal is what you really want to have any standards on there at all. Uh, with cleaners though, you have to be careful. They can be a little more tricky. Um, organic can be used as a chemist term, um, meaning that the compound, the chemicals made of carbon atoms would make it organic, but it's not the kind of organic that a lot of people care about. So you always want that organic seal on there um, to, you know, verify that it truly is organic. And at the bottom there I have some, I guess you'd say, sources, but um, third-party labelers, they create labels for cleaners that are a lot more trustworthy than the ones you'll find. So you have Green Seal, Eco Logo, and Safer Choice um, is that label 
um, I have a picture of there. It's going to be coming out pretty soon. You'll be seeing it a lot more in grocery stores. They also have a Safer Choice fragrance-free label, so specifically for fragrance-free things. Um, these labels are third-party labels, which means that they are being produced by an independent organization who, are, who is evaluating the cleaners. Um, I say that because it makes a pretty big difference. Actually, um, if a company wants to look great or to look like it's environmental, it can create its own label, um, a company label, and put that on its products and call it something like, I don't know, like green, green clean, or like the green, my, like our green seal, or you know, like name it something very similar to what these labels are, um, but it's different and it's not regulated by anyone, and the company has the right to do that to make their own label. But you can see why you might not want to trust that label if the company itself is making it. So I would always say to go with um, government labels or third-party organization labels like these ones. And these are just some price comparisons. Um, it's kind of fun to see, you know, if you're not already convinced to make your own cleaners, you'll see how much less expensive it is. This is the all-purpose cleaner, uh, $3.29 compared to $0.64. Cents. And the next one will be the window cleaner. Um, it's even more, a bigger difference really, because all our window cleaner is, and all you really need, is vinegar and water. So it's 10 cents versus a store-bought one. We have 419 there, but I'm sure some can be a lot more. Anywhere around that range. So if you're looking for a way to save money, you've got it right there. Um, another thing I often like to point out is that we have so many bottles under our sinks and stored in our houses, and um, it's not really necessary to have all those different cleaners under your counter, one being used for counters, one being used for windows, one being used for like your tap and your, you know, water dispenser. It's, it's kind of crazy. Um, I would just simplify, if you can. You know, use vinegar, soap, water, and save money. And the last thing that's on our pamphlet, and it's really important, we've talked about it a little bit, but environmental damage. A lot of the cleaners you use, if you think about where they end up, they end up, you know, an aerosol, like a spray can, will end up in the air, in the atmosphere. And a lot of the other ones get washed down the drain. So they end up in our water, in affecting um, aquatic life. So here, volatile organic compounds, VOCs, you might hear those talked about a lot for causing smog formation. Um, they have been banned in a lot of aerosols, but they are still out there in a lot of cleaners. Um, ingredients with phosphorus or nitrogen, which are, you know, a surprisingly large amount of cleaners. Uh, phosphorus and nitrogen are what, cause it, or what are causing pollution in Lake Champlain. Uh, they encourage algae growth, um, which then pollutes our water and makes it dangerous to drink and dangerous for um, animals and other aquatic life to live in. And the last one I can't even pronounce, but it's a surfactant, um, which means that it lessens the surface tension on water, so it, you can make more bubbles, more foam from something if it has this compound in it. But it's an endocrine disruptor, so adverse reproductive effects in wildlife. I'm sure you might have heard of things like frogs changing their sex. Um, it's compounds like these, I mean of course not only these, but these really aren't helping anyone um, and they're contributing to that pollution problem. Another thing I want to mention here also is that it depends where you look, but the statistic is usually that um, the indoors of our homes and of our buildings are about 6 to 10 percent more polluted than outdoors. So when you think of smog and air pollution, you might think of a giant cloud over a city. But it's important to keep in mind that this pollution, if you don't care about the environment, it still pollutes your home. So the big three, uh, this is, these are the uh, main three things we make most of our homemade cleaners from. There are of course other recipes and other ingredients, um, but white 5% vinegar, baking soda, and castile soap are pretty much all you need for at least the basic household cleaning. So I'm just going to quickly explain each of those in case you're unfamiliar with them. Castile soap is different than just any soap. Castile soap is a vegetable-based soap, um, and it's a real soap. I've written in the bottom there, um, detergent blends often claim to be soap, but they actually don't have any soap in them. Um, this is real soap from vegetable-based. If you're um, used to camping, you probably know Dr. Bronner's. I have that variety here. It's the most common one. Um, you can use this. You can go wash your hair in a stream or in a pond, and it won't affect anything negatively, 
Whereas you can't exactly bring a bottle of Dawn dish detergent out there and, you know, expect to leave it as it was. So this truly is biodegradable, vegetable-based soap, um, much healthier for waterways and all of our aquatic life. Vinegar. A lot of people have heard of cleaning with vinegar. It's acidic. Uh, it'll break down a lot of, uh, you know, leftover hard water kind of marks on your kitchen appliances. It's also a great disinfectant, so 99% of germs uh, and bacteria are killed with vinegar. Uh, good to keep in mind. And this last one is baking soda. You probably know at least a little bit about cleaning with baking soda. Um, it's great for removing odor. Uh, one way to do this would be to sprinkle it on, say, a dog bed or on a carpet. Let it sit for an hour or two, or however long the odor is. Bad, you can kind of judge that. And vacuum it up. Uh, removes odor really well, but also is mildly abrasive. So, good to use in scrubbing things. And the last one here are essential oils. I like to add these to a lot of cleaners. Um, these are not fragrances. Uh, fragrances are the manufactured chemicals. Um, these are direct extracts from roots, plants, leaves, vegetables. I have a couple up here now. Um, they're great for scent, but also if you are looking for other properties, uh, things like tea tree, sweet orange, and lavender are actually disinfecting. So you can add a kind of extra boost to your cleaner, as well as that nice smell. And um, this part of the workshop, unfortunately, if you're watching this right now, you can't do it. Uh, maybe I'll show you guys later, but these are two recipes um, that I usually make with people in workshops and send them home with. The first one here is an all-purpose cleaner. So it has a tablespoon of liquid soap, warm water, and two-thirds cup vinegar. Uh, if you do make this at home, I'm going to caution you that you definitely want to add the soap and the water together first. Uh, let those mix a little bit and then add the vinegar. Soap and vinegar have a kind of unfortunate reaction. You'll really regret it if you just mix those two and then add water. So follow the order I have here. And I also put at the bottom two or three drops of essential oil, just because I like them a lot. Um, feel free to do that or not. You can put this all in a spray bottle and use that on, I mean, any surface really. Counters are great. Uh, this is great for cleaning, stuff like that. Um, and window and glass cleaner, which I mentioned before, is just vinegar and water. Um, if you've been using a store-bought cleaner, an over-the-counter cleaner, I would recommend washing your windows with just soap and water first. Um, oftentimes, store-bought cleaners leave a residue on windows. And if you then use this vinegar and water on your window, that residue will show and it will look like they're not clean. So I would wash with Castile soap and water first and then do this solution pretty much forever after that. And it works extremely well. Uh, this last point is something I get asked occasionally um, about whether or not, well one, if these are really cleaning your house. Um, and that kind of leads to, well, what I, you know, I ask the question, what are you trying to get rid of in your house? Uh, because you can see they're obviously removing the dirt and the grime. Um, and a lot of people are worried about germs and bacteria. So I just thought I'd throw this in. Um, antibacterials contain pesticides. Uh, EPA doesn't have a protocol for evaluating neurotoxicity and hormone disruption, even though a lot of pesticides can cause that. Um, in addition, antibacterial soaps, so if you buy a soap and it says antibacterial on it, you think it's doing more. Uh, there have been studies to show that they actually aren't any more effective than just regular soap and water. So I think that it's a lot of a mind game. Um, we convince ourselves we're doing something good and eliminating germs, but in reality we're kind of overusing antibacterials unnecessarily. So this is a foaming hand soap. Um, I have it, I, I don't usually make it at workshops because one important part of this soap is that you have to buy a foaming hand dispenser or you have to recycle an old one from an old, old soap bottle. Um, if you're in the area, the uh, New Hampshire Upper Valley area, they have them at the White River Co-op, the Upper Valley White River Co-op, but I'm sure you can get them at other health food stores or order them online. Um, and all that's in it is, you know, a couple of tablespoons of Castile soap and water. You can add essential oil if you wish, but this is really all you need to stay clean and free of bacteria and germs. You don't really need that antibacterial stuff. And I have a recipe here for disinfectant antibacterial. This has some essential oils in it that are disinfecting. Uh, the lavender and the sweet orange, but I mentioned before that vinegar will also do this. Um, hydrogen peroxide will also disinfect. 
So there are other ways to disinfect your home than using a disinfecting soap. Um, and in addition, you really should probably think about what you're trying to get rid of in terms of cleaning. Um, the overuse of disinfecting soaps and hand washes uh, has caused, you know, germs and bacteria and different viruses that are resistant to the antibac to the disinfectant. So I think that we maybe need to reevaluate how much we're using those sorts of things. Um, DHMC has actually eliminated um, antibacterial soaps. So if you're looking for a reputable source to follow, there's one for you. And these are just some good resources. We already talked about EWG.org, um, which is an environmental working group. That is a third party, um, so it's independent of any companies or even the government. And it will evaluate your cleaners for you. They also have great things about food additives, um, cosmetics. I'd recommend taking a look there. And also this book here um, is written by Annie Berthold Bond. She's a guru in this sort of field. She has some videos online and she has a couple other books. So I would definitely take a look at this book or any of her other resources. Um, and I guess I'll just end here with my email address and um, some contact information about UVLSRPC, uh, the Upper Valley Lake Sunapee Regional Planning Commission. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and contact me if you have any questions.